Hello everybody, this is a small portable EEG electroencephalograph. What it shows is brainwave activity basically. It's a very simple but fairly accurate machine. It's an early mind mirror machine. The panel itself is divided into a left and right hand panel. The left hand panel basically measures electrical activity in the left hemisphere of the brain and the right hand panel measures electrical activity in the right hemisphere. What you're seeing from the top to the bottom is beta activity, then alpha activity, then theta activity, and the bottom two bars represent delta activity. So what this is showing is activity in the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere through a whole range of beta to alpha to theta to delta waves, brain waves. You can see that in the left-hand panel, representing the left hemisphere, which would be analytic thinking, logic, or abstract thinking, there's a lot of activity, particularly in the beta and alpha, that's the upper reaches of the panel, because I've basically been assembling this unit. In the right-hand panel, there's less because the activity I've been engaged in is much more linear, abstract, logical, and so on. Traditionally, what we see in waking state is a lot of beta activity if there's thinking and alpha activity is a more relaxed alert state. Theta waves which begin about halfway down the panel here and which is very little theta showing right here because theta waves usually appear only in states of sleep with dreaming and occasionally states of certain types of meditation and states of certain types of creativity and reverie. And in the bottom two bars here represent delta. You usually see delta waves only in deep dreamless sleep. Now there's a lot of delta activity. Traditionally you show delta wave patterns in the waking state only if you have a brain tumor or only with certain types of eye movement, neither of which are happening in this case. So delta is probably indicative of some other activities including a constant state of witnessing which we'll talk about that in a moment. So what I'm going to do is basically go into a series of meditative states here and the first state that I'm going to try to enter is a type of nervi kalpa samadhi. It's not a classic nervi kalpa but I'm, I'm going to try to basically suspend all mental activity with the exception of that witnessing delta state. So what you should see if this works is virtually all of those lights should go to zero. I'll pause it here for a moment. So what we see here is obviously no activity in the left or right hemisphere. Beta, alpha, theta states are all zero. You can see that the delta states, however, there's still a great deal of activity, maximum activity actually, in the two lower bars representing delta. Again, you normally see delta only in deep dreamless sleep, which the traditions maintain is a state of pure witnessing. There's a state of constant witnessing that does accompany this. We don't necessarily see, because we're at an early stage of research in these areas, it's not necessarily the case, I don't believe, that all states of witnessing are accompanied by delta. As a matter of fact, in a lot of meditation research, certain types of witnessing states have theta activity with alpha activity. That's also very common with other types of deep meditative states. We see theta and alpha. Here, of course, is neither theta nor alpha nor beta states. Those have all gone to zero. The subjective experience here is one of simply no mental activity whatsoever, but pure, vast, open awareness or witnessing. What I'm going to try to do in the next frame that you'll see is reproduce this state with my eyes open, which is, needless to say, considerably harder. I want basically mental activity to be as close to zero as possible while maintaining a certain kind of witnessing. Derek, why don't you pause it here for a second. Again, what we see now is zero activity in the upper reaches. Again, going from the top to the bottom, it would be beta activity, alpha, theta, and delta. And each of those represent about a fourth of the screen. In other words, the, the top fourth or so is beta activity, then the next fourth of the lights would be alpha, and then the next fourth theta, and then the bottom 
two or three bars represent delta. There's again delta activity here and no other kinds of brain activity. I want to repeat again that I don't think this is typical of witnessing. It's a very specific kind of meditation that I'm doing. Um, it's a very rare type of meditation, frankly. The most common types of meditative states we see today tend to be either alpha by itself, which is relaxed awareness while awake, or theta with alpha activity. There's one other kind of brainwave pattern we see, however, and that's long-term meditators, usually of 20 years or longer, start to achieve constant consciousness around the clock. In other words, there's a witnessing that occurs during waking dream and deep sleep states. That's often accompanied by delta pattern while the person is sleeping in deep dream of sleep. They show the standard delta. Then they also show theta and alpha activity while in the dream state. In a moment, I'll try to reproduce that pattern while awake. What we see here is an attempt to stop the delta wave. And this is the specific type of meditation I was talking about. So this is very difficult to describe, but even the sense of witnessing is going to disappear. That's what I'm trying to do subjectively. And so what you're going to see here is virtually all patterns, including delta, uh, come to zero. And that's, let me pause that for a moment. That's basically what we see here is there's a very, very minimum amount of brainwave activity of any variety, alpha, beta, theta, or delta. And the subjective state is one of, there's simply awareness, but it's not confined in any sense to the individual body-mind. Needless to say, it's very difficult to describe but those who have, I think, long-term meditators and those who have a sense of sahaj or non-dual awareness realize that awareness really isn't generated in the brain or even in the body-mind. This is, I believe, a type of correlate that we're going to see in the upper right quadrant when these states are... They're not really being realized because they're ever-present, but they're being... The individual body-mind is being aligned with those states. Again, needless to say, a lot of research to be done on this. This is a preliminary attempt to correlate some of these upper right quadrant brainwave patterns with certain subjective states of consciousness. Go ahead and start it up again. And what I'm going to show, I think, in the next sequence here is a much more standard pattern of meditation. Basically what we see here is, and let's pause that. So right around here, what we're seeing is in the upper part, much more typical pattern for meditation. What I'm doing here is a kind of mantra meditation. So we expect to see a much more typical conventional type of meditative pattern, which is, you can see a large bump in the alpha region. So there's little beta activity, but a large amount of alpha, and there's some theta activity as well. Of course, there's still a large amount of delta. Now here, what's happening basically is there's delta, theta, and alpha. Now that's typically we see this in long-term meditators while they're sleeping. So the delta pattern represents deep sleep state, and the small amounts of theta and larger amounts of alpha are classically meditative states. Saying the three of those together generally happens in deep dreamless sleep with people that are lucidly aware in deep dreamless sleep. And this type of pattern is being reproduced here in somebody who's awake. Again, I think that's from years of meditation when the body-mind itself is adapting to this type of sahaj or ever-present awareness. I believe that's the last and say a few closing remarks. One is that this is indeed very preliminary stuff on a very simple EEG machine. I think what is indicative though is whether these patterns actually are typical of the kinds of states that we will see. The fact that changing subjective states of consciousness can so immediately show up in changes of brainwave patterns is indicative and telling, to put it mildly. This is the beginning of types of research that I think is going to continue, and indeed there has been a fair amount of research done correlating brain states with meditative states, particularly by the, the TM people. Some of the research that they've done is a little bit wobbly, but some of it is very, very sound and has indeed been correlated with a great number of subjective states. I think this kind of research is certainly the kind of stuff that we'd like to see continue 
and this is a little preliminary investigation on my own part on states of consciousness correlated with brainwave patterns. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks.